Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your roundup of all things maker and embedded and lovely. And this week, we're getting back to doing one of the things I love the most. That is, looking at fantastic projects made by you and other talented people on the internet. We'll also be returning to funding website things to see all of those wonderful crowdfunded devices that our wallets probably don't want us to buy, but our brains and our hearts do. And of course, we'll be uh, having yet another competition. Um, we've been so lucky to have such a wealth of wonderful things to give away on this show, and this week is no different. We will be announcing a competition to win a Nordic Thingy, uh, Thingy 53 development kit, an amazing little Bluetooth low energy kit. So stay tuned to find out more about that. But for now, uh, yeah, let's get on with the show. We are going to start this week's episode by taking a look in the Electromaker Discord server. Now, uh, we do have a Discord server. There is a link to it in the description of this video. Um, there's also a link to it under the community tab of our website. Um, and while there is a, a section in here for showing off projects, that same community tab on the website is where you can find the projects page, which is the best way to kind of share projects in the Electromaker community. But there is a show off projects channel on the Discord server as well. Um, and I thought it might be nice to have a quick look in there and see some of the things that have been posted there. And we're going to start with uh, this post just up here so the one like just above my head and and to the side of me right now uh, so this is uh, Colin Ventzin, or Wentzin. I you see, I'm from, I live in Germany, so that would be Ventzin. But uh, he's an American school kid, so I'm guessing it's Wentzin. Colin, if you see this, I'm terribly sorry for mispronouncing your surname. Um, but uh, we actually met Colin before, um, so let's head to his YouTube channel and we'll find out why. So, those of you familiar with Electromaker will recognize a couple of Colin's projects. This is Colin's channel, by the way, Colin Ventzin. Uh, I'm going to keep calling you Colin Ventzin. I'm terribly sorry I live in Germany, and that's just how I pronounce it. Um, and uh, uh, this is the link that was in that Discord server. If you head to the Show Off Project section, you will find it there. Um, and if you are uh, uh, someone who's followed Electromaker for a while, you probably notice a couple of these projects, and that as things that you recognize, because the basketball scorecard is something that he uh, put up on Electromaker. I believe is one of the things that may have even won one of the Electromaker of the Month prizes. I can't quite remember, which is an Arduino mega powered basketball scorecard, which looks amazing. It's a really polished, finished project. And the other one is the not so electric bike. And by not so electric, it means it doesn't add uh, electric power to a bike. Uh, the only electricity here is adding a speedometer and various other things to an already existing bike, which is very much what I agree with. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of electric bikes. Um, the most latest video, though, the most latest, the latest video from Colin, however, is something that I find really fun. Um, it, it's actually a fairly simple concept. But this is a uh, cheap chassis from a remote control car, which has a big QR code on it. Um, and it is yeah, a viral marketing strategy for getting people interested in his school club. And uh, as it says here, um, it's yeah, kind of amazing. Uh, using just an RC card, uh, car, cardboard and paper, and of course by generating a QR code, they were able to get half the school to scan the QR code and read about their club. Um, yeah, it's a fantastically made video, and for someone who is still a school kid, uh, the way that they are thinking about doing things and the projects that they are making are already of an incredibly high standard. Um, uh, yeah, and more and more young people these days are not only being creative, but they're sharing those creations on YouTube, uh, and some of them are doing it in very unique ways. And I'm already a fan of Colin. I'll be looking forward to seeing more of the videos that he puts out. And uh, this video essentially just takes you through, yeah, how you can take some very simple things and do something kind of impressive with them. Now, another member of our Discord server who you may already be familiar with if you've watched the Electromega show for a while is Kevin, also known as DIY Electro Music. Uh, he has a blog which is one of the real um, resources for turning Arduinos and other uh, music making, uh, sorry, other microcontrollers into music making devices, be that directly creating tones or MIDI routing or whatever. Um, but he's back with another performance, as it were. This is the lo fi orchestral tubular bells. I'm going to leave this playing in the background very quietly. Um, if you would like to hear this, do head to this blog. Um, there's a link to it in the Discord server, as I've mentioned. I'll try to remember to link it in the description of the video as well. Tubular Bells is one of the most recognizable pieces of music. Um, whether you know who Mike Oldfield is or even know what Tubular Bells is, you do know this piece of music. It is massively famous. Um, and this is the entirety of Tubular Bells Part 1. There's, a part a and, there's an A and B side to it. Um, and as you can see, there is quite a lot of kit here. There's quite a lot going on. Um, now, a few stats just very quickly. This uh, performance uh, has 11 Arduino Nanos, 6 Unos, 1 Pro Mini, 1 uh, Adafruit Feather 32U4, and a Raspberry Pi running MT32Pi. 
Um, and it also lists all the different projects that came together in order to make this possible. In fact, this is one of the things that I think is really special about the DIY electro music blog, is that um, for a long time now, Kevin has been putting blogs together as to how you can make microcontrollers, make music, or um, split MIDI. There's a lot of MIDI work on this site. And every single tutorial that is written can link to other tutorials breaking down each section of it. Um, the, and not only that, but um, these tutorials have also been reorganized in various places for how to get started with this, that, or the other. Um, this is a real resource. If you want to go from very little knowledge to a lot very quickly, Kevin is a great person for that. Um, and obviously, if you have been watching the show for some time and you know my particular proclivities, big word, um, yeah, microcontrollers and music kind of is a big thing for me. So this is a really lovely site. And uh, I love the fact that not only is this tutorials as to how you make things and how you can make your own musical instruments using very, very cheap microcontrollers, but every now and again you get the performances like this, like the lo-fi orchestra playing tubular bells, like the the carnival of the was it the carnival of the animals or was it the planets i think the planets suite was another one and the, uh, and maybe the young the lo-fi guide to the orchestra and um, which is a riff on the the young person's guide to the orchestra another famous piece of music um yeah uh, i'm very glad to have kevin as part of our electromaker community um and i have learned a lot from his blog even as someone who's been fiddling around doing this kind of stuff myself for some time i highly recommend going and checking it out the final thing we're going to talk about from the Discord today is a project from Ashok, who, uh, whose YouTube handle is Embedded Club. Um, and it, it's a nice tie-in, actually, because at the end of this section, the next thing we'll be talking about is today's giveaway, and today's giveaway is a Nordic Thingy 53, uh, which is exactly what is used in this project. So this is a floating sensor project that uses the Matter protocol over Thread. Um, and if you don't know what that means, it's kind of exciting. Uh, we'll come on to it in a moment. But what you're looking at here is a Nordic Thingy 53 um, with a distance sensor on the top. In fact, we'll be giving away a Nordic 53 today on the show if I haven't already mentioned that. A Raspberry Pi 3 is being used as a border router for the Open Thread network. And there is another Nordic semiconductor board which is being used to control the motor uh, for the pump. So for adding more water to the barrel. And this is a, a, a water height detector. The idea is that the Nordic Thingy 53, as you will see later in this video, sits on a floating platform at the top of the water, and how much distance there is between that and the lid of the pot is how much water is in there. And of course, uh, you can use that to determine whether more water should be put in it, um, and yeah, various other things. As I mentioned earlier though, what makes this exciting is that this is using the Matter protocol. Now Matter is a new smart home protocol for uh, uh, talking across uh, kind of sub gigahertz networks, similar to Zigbee in a way. Um, in its simplest sense, it is an open language that is uh, supported by everybody, Apple and Google and uh, Amazon, and so all of your devices can talk to each other without there having to be a lot of difficulty, let's say. Um, back at IFA in September, I was saw in the Eve booth, they had an Apple HomeKit plug, which should only work with Apple HomeKit things, but it was being turned on and off directly using Matter with a, by a Google Nest Hub. Um, and that was the first time I'd seen it in action. It did feel a little bit special, like this is what smart homes should be like. Um, and if you want to learn anything more about it, this is exactly the kind of project for you. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no write-up of this yet. Um, uh, Ashok has a website, which is embedded.club. I checked it. There's no uh, sight of this quite yet. I'm sure it'll be coming up soon. Um, but the video itself does sort of take you through step-by-step step, um, the surface level ways of doing this. Obviously, there's some underneath stuff in terms of configuring all of the uh, kits to, to do what you want them to do. Um, and that's something that's a little bit above my pay grade. I'd have to spend time actually playing with the stuff myself uh, using Matter and Thread. I am yet to make my own um, Matter device. I would really like to put, have the time to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, this is what I was talking about just before. This is the float um, that the Nordic Thingy 53 goes on. And um, and one thing that I have to say is, is, is uh, the project is incredibly important impressive but also the level of bravery because <laughs> I don't think I would trust myself to stick um, my development kit to uh, a float like that but uh, yeah absolutely nothing goes wrong throughout this and there are no dunked uh, electrical components thankfully anyway um this project and all the ones i've just talked about are in our discord server um and as well as heading to the uh, discord server itself if you head to the electromaker website um uh, and instead of having to find links in the description or whatever if you're someone who goes to the electromaker website for whatever reason anyway under the community tab here um there is a link directly to the discord server there which will give you an invite and uh, you don't have to install discord onto your computer if it's something that you don't already own it will work perfectly well in the browser it as well. Um, in fact, I only have it installed on this computer. Everywhere else, I just use the browser and it is perfectly fine. Um, 
I'm really happy whenever new things show up in the Discord server. Um, but of course, any project that you are working on, whether it's finished or not, consider heading to the projects panel of the Electromaker website because all of the projects there um, are automatically entered into the Electromaker of the Month competition where you can win free stuff um, and also are routinely shown on this show. Although, of course, today we had a look at the Discord instead. Up next, we're going to talk about Italian pasta manufacturer Barilla, which is not the normal kind of thing we would talk about on this show, you'd imagine, but there's a good reason why we're going to. Because there's no shortage of things you can buy, which are small hardware devices that will pair with your smartphone that can do a million and one things. And Barilla thought we're going to do that as well. We're going to make a little device that you can use in order to cook pasta perfectly and by using less energy. But what they did in the hardware side of things was surprising, because instead of creating something that you can buy, they have open sourced the hardware and said, here is a very simple step-by-step -step instructions for how any maker can make their own perfect pasta making machine. So this is the passive cooker and essentially it, it is a 3D printed case with an Arduino and a thermistor inside it. This pairs to a, an app because it is the uh, Arduino BLE33 board which of course is Bluetooth Low Energy and Barilla have pre uh, pre presented a free app that you can use with it. Um, and yeah, it's an open source project that a huge uh, pasta manufacturer is, is behind. It's obscure but wonderful all at once. So I'm going to link the uh, I'm going to link the main page for this, which shows you the video and it tells you how passive cooking works. Um, uh, but in short, you know, instead of boiling all the time, you can uh, leave the pasta steeping in hot water for a certain amount of time and get exactly the same results. There are some people who argue with that and those people are wrong. Um, however, the thing that I find interesting is that the app itself um, will allow you to choose apparently what kind of pasta you're using and a couple of other things. Um, and then it communicates that to the Arduino, which essentially is just acting as a glorified timer with a thermistor. Um, and yeah, the, you can hear from my voice, I'm sort of excited about this. Uh, of course, this being the Electromaker show, what we're really interested in is what's going on under the hood. So um, uh, essentially, uh, that's just the thermometer casing. Essentially, this is an Arduino and a thermistor. So there's a battery pack which attaches to an Arduino Nano BLE, uh, 33 BLE, and here is the circuit. And it's wonderfully simple. It's essentially just a switch for turning things on and off. It has a 10 nanofarad capacitor across a 100K thermistor and then a 100K, um, uh, th uh, sorry, 100K resistor running out to, uh, I believe, to pull up the thermistor. Or is it pulling it down? I always get that wrong at first glance. Either way, um, this all fits into a nice, tidy little 3D printed case. And I already checked the bill of materials earlier on today. Um, I forget the exact name of the filament they are using, but it is biodegradable, it is food safe, and it's perfectly fine up to the temperatures that this thing will be working at because essentially it sits on top of the pan. Um, it is such a wonderful idea for a company to say we're going to make an open source maker project something as part of their advertising campaign because this is a really high quality project. They've obviously put a lot of time and energy and of course money into making this thing happen. Um, not to mention the fact that they have, you know, the, the professional launch video and anything that a big company does uh, costs money to do. And they're not going to necessarily get much of a financial return on this. They're not selling these things themselves. I'm sure they might be getting some commission on the parts. But yeah, it's still a fairly niche thing to do and something that I find absolutely fantastic that they are choosing to do it. I hope I haven't been too much in the way during this section. I realized that my face was kind of in the way. Let's just go back down to that circuit one more time, just in case I was covering it before. Um, but yes. This is something that I think is a wonderful idea, um, and the fact that the firmware is out there, um, it's something that wouldn't be all that hard to try, because, I mean, apart from the 100k thermistor, I have all of this stuff just sitting behind me, um, and I kind of wonder whether it might be fun just trying to set this up once. Maybe uh, maybe you'll finally see my kitchen as part of the Electromaker show while I make some pasta as part of a future show. But I wish more companies would do this. I wish there was more evidence of this out in the world, saying that uh, we understand that we could make a smart device and we could privately produce it and sell it for whatever profit margin we need, and it just becomes another piece of junk, essentially, that only does one thing. But I bet you everyone that makes their own pasta cooking magical device that pairs with their phone, when they make it themselves, I bet that they use it, and I bet that it means a lot more to them than just something cheap you order off Amazon late at night when you think, oh, yeah, I need that in my life. Anyway, a link to the passive cooking part of the Barilla website, which is not something I thought I'd ever be saying, <laughs> will be in the description of this video. Now this is a Super 8 video editor. Um, this was the way that you cut tape at home before there was any digital um, film at all. Um, and uh, these things were not cheap and were not particularly easy to use. And of course, when you cut tape, you're literally cutting the tape and you have to splice it. This is old technology, um, but there's a certain 
wonderfulness to it as well. Um, when you're talking about frame rates, the frame rate here is literally whatever speed the user is deciding to use their hand. So why am I showing you this footage of an Elmo Editor 912? Well, because it talks, it leads nicely into our next project, which does something that I have talked about many times in the past, something I love. You take something old and put new technology inside it, and you make it something completely new once again. This wonderful little device was made by Edwardian Pug on the Raspberry Pi Project subreddit. And um, I wish I could say, hey, here's the build guide, but it does not exist, at least as of yet, at least as far as I can tell. But this is a, a dual editor for a Super 8. Um, uh, and as far as I can tell, they haven't even really ripped the insides apart all that much. Um, they've just put a nice little screen that fits perfectly inside the boost box, uh, as what they are calling it. Um, it fits perfectly inside it as a little viewer for a Raspberry Pi. Um, and it just looks wonderful, doesn't it? Um, now, there's not that much information about it, in fairness, really. It says, uh, you know, underneath, please tell me there's a build guide for this. And it just says, will do. And that's as far as we know so far. Um, and other than the fact that it has has, uh, let's have a look. So, other than the fact that, is the viewer gutted or just a really cool enclosure? Are you able to view the 8mm film on the screen? You had to move the bulb to make room for a speaker, so there's a speaker in it, but all the parts are still inside it, so in 20 minutes it could be back to its old job, um, which is kind of amazing. Um, and uh, the only other question there is here is about the uh, the keyboard itself. This is apparently a BM40 ortholinear keyboard, if that means something to you out there. I'm not much of a keyboard person, although I might be, as I mentioned in previous shows, because of Voidstar, he's slowly chipping away at my brain and I, I want to make a keyboard I do however this is something that you can buy if you are interested the box itself I hope there is more news about this in the future because I would love to find out more but yes take something old put something new inside it and either completely change the way it works or just end up with something aesthetically nice it's something I love doing um, and I will be linking this and the video of the super a editor because I thought it was kind of cool I'll be linking those in the description of the video <laughs> It is time to start the giveaway, and this week we are giving away a Nordic Thingy 53. Now, this isn't so much a development board as it is a full prototyping kit. Um, it is a Bluetooth low energy device, but it is well set up for using Edge AI. It is fully um, uh, supported by Edge Impulse, so you can do no code AI on this without much problems. And it has a bunch of sensors on board. We'll ha have a quick look at the actual official website for it in a moment. Um, and uh, this thing, in the very brief time I had to play with it a little while back when I first received it, um, has been a really fun thing to work with. As with most Nordic stuff, you can get the basics up and running without any real uh, struggle. Uh, the, the software suite is already primed with examples as to how you can use it, and then you can dive as deep into it after that as you want. Um, this is, of course, uh, an ARM Cortex chip on here, and you can program it however you want to, although Nordic does have a great suite of tools for working with them. And in terms of hardware as well, this is quite interesting in that um, since this is a Bluetooth low energy device, and you want to make sure you're using as low power as possible, there is a little power and debug board that slots into it. Um, and so while you are working with it, you can take all of the power um, uh, out from here and use either a power profiling kit, which is another thing Nordic sells or anything that uh, you, you know profiles your power in order to check that you are using um, as little current as possible. I just thought that was a very nice little touch. Now, I, I did actually have a little bit of time to play with it, as you're uh, seeing on the screen just here. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the short amount of time I had to fiddle with it. I would have loved to have a bit more time to, uh, to play with it. Maybe I will do between now and the end of the contest so I can show you more of the cool things things that it can do. However, let's have a very quick look at the stats. So inside the box, you get this PCB. Well, actually not just this PCB. Um, if I look inside here and I make myself larger once again, just for a second, you will see that there's an NFC antenna here as well. And just underneath, I don't know how well you can see this, there is a lithium ion battery, which is attached to the battery connector, which you can see on the uh, bottom right of the diagram just over here. Now, um, this is a low energy device. The idea being that you could put this in situ with the battery and it could last for quite a while without being used. And uh, the sense that they've given you are also quite useful with that in mind as well. So for example, if you wanted something that would sit in the field forever and only wake up if uh, it felt like it was moved, if you wanted to check something wasn't being stolen, for example, or tracking assets that maybe would sit still for quite a while, there is a low power accelerometer on the board for that. But there's also all the other things you would imagine with a fully featured prototyping kit here, like an accelerometer and gyroscope, a humidity, temperature, pressure and gas sensor, and a few other different connectors. The battery management is on board as well. On the other side is where the NRF5340 system on chip 
ship lies along with an NRF 21540, um, which is uh, and it's called an FEM. That's a front end module. That is what's giving you all of this connectivity. Um, it gives you uh, Bluetooth low energy, yes, but it also uh, works with Zigbee. It also works with Matter and Thread, uh, which is what we were talking about earlier. Um, the uh, project that Ashok did works over over Thread using Matter. Um, Thread is the connectivity type. Matter is the SDK for doing it with. Again, I need to actually get hands on and do more with it to truly understand how it all works. Um, in short, this is a wonderful piece of kit. It's one that I wish I'd had a little bit more time to play with, um, but one of you is going to be taking it home to play with instead. Because as usual, we're going to be doing uh, the kind of contest that uh, we've done many times in the past, although um, I think we're going to start keeping it random from here on because, frankly, it's too difficult to choose a winner based on what they're going to do with it. So all you need to do in order to enter this competition is be subscribed to this YouTube channel, head down to the comments of this video, and leave the hashtag thingy53. No spaces, no colon. I know it has a colon in the name, but just to make it non-confusing. Thingy53 without any spaces or anything like that. I'll, I'll put it on the screen, like, somewhere here. <laughs> um, and uh, next week, we will be picking a winner for this little box. Um, I have been really enjoying playing with the both the Thingy 53 and the Thingy 91 with the brief amount of time I had to play with them. I had a lot more time with the 91 than the 53. Um, this fits quite nicely into what I might want to use for the various things I've talked about in terms of music and running based uh, projects that I have on the back burner. Hopefully I'll get one of those finished over Christmas this year, who knows. But um, yeah, uh, I'm very happy to be uh, giving this away and as always whoever does win this, I would love to see what you decide to do with it. Document it on the Electromaker website, let us know what you make with it um, and uh, of course you can jump into the Discord to ask any advice um, if the, you had any general questions about how to use this thing um, I'm sure there'll be people there with a bit more expert knowledge than I have that will be able to help you with it. As I mentioned in our tweet in congratulating Uli S from uh, last week who won the Latte Panda 3 Delta, we have a lot of giveaways coming up. Um, as we talked about at Make a Fair Rome, Melopero just put out a brand new board, the Cookie RP2040. We'll be giving that away soon, along with a host of other things, including things from Inkplate. Um, we have so much stuff to give away towards the end of this year that we might even have a sort of Electromaker Christmas raffle at some point, so do keep tuning into the show if you're interested in that. And of course, uh, I will be talking about lots of fun Maker and Embedded things at the same time, as always, as well. If you are enjoying the Electromaker show, it would mean a lot to us if you could check that you are indeed subscribed to our channel. Uh, this is a YouTube subscription, which is very different to subscriptions on other uh, platforms in that this isn't going to cost you any money or anything like that. All it does is it adds us to the subscriptions list in your YouTube account. If you click the bell just next to the subscribe button, if you click all here, it will give you subs uh, uh, it will give you notifications just within here when we upload things to the site. So we usually only upload one video per week, and that is the uh, Electromaker show. Uh, there are exceptions to that rule, like when we were away at Maker Fair Rome. However, it is very rare that we upload a lot of vi uh, videos at once, and we try not to spam anyone on any of our platforms, really. Um, the one other thing that you can do as well is head to any one of our actual videos and just make sure that if you are watching it, you do click the like button. Like, comment and subscribe is a phrase that YouTube seems to like when people say it in videos and it does all seem to make a difference. Any engagement that you have with our channel makes it far more likely that YouTube will recommend it to other people who watch the same kind of things that you do. However, if you'd like to uh, support us in a slightly more concrete way, consider going to the Electromaker shop. We stock pretty much everything from everyone, including some interesting things like crowd supply. Um, pretty much everything I talk about on the show from crowd supply, we make sure that we get in stock so that even if you don't get it as part of the initial fundraising campaign, you can still buy it after the fact. Um, our shop is what we use instead of uh, YouTube ads and things like Patreon and you know different kind of direct sponsorship ways that you can uh, interact with an audience. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty much everything that gets, uh, every penny that gets sent uh, spent in our shop goes towards the show. My, that was hard to say. Uh, so yes, thank you so much for your patience for this uh, little advert of ours. Um, but the things you can do on YouTube are great and the things you can buy in the shop will support us directly. I could have really just said that in a very short sentence, couldn't I? <laughs> We're now moving on to funding website things, which is the part of the show where we talk about things on funding websites, and we're beginning on Kickstarter with Tiny Circuits. Now, uh, the Tiny TV 2 and Tiny TV Mini, uh, I can pretty much sum it up in a couple of images. They are tiny little televisions. They're very cute. Um, and uh, Tiny Circuits have got some previous doing all of this kind of stuff. In fact, I have one of their previous uh, devices. I can't remember if we talked about it on the show or not. I think we must have done. 
Um, but I remember stumbling across the Thummy, and just the sheer tininess of this it amazes me. And yes, this really does work. In fact, I can show you here. This is a working little device that you can program yourself. Um, I currently just have the uh, the uh, registered f firmware that it comes with, but it has yeah a version of Tetris that works in something that is tiny. It's the size of my thumb, the uh, end of my thumb. It's a really small little thing. Anyway, uh, that was a bit of a distraction. In many ways, this is already explained just by the image. It's just a tiny little television, but it's actually a little smarter than just a little OLED screen uh, that repeats a GIF. Uh, these things actually uh, have uh, storage on board. I think it has eight gigs of storage. Let's have a look. Yeah, built in eight gigabyte uh, micro SD card storage. So you can put up to 10 hours of videos on here. Um, and I love this little thing here. I don't know if this is just built into the device, into the firmware, but you get that, that little um, static every time they're changing the channel just there. I think that's just such a lovely idea. Um, and as with all of these things, um, they're they're just fun and they're not hideously expensive. They're good things. That, they're you know they're good things for gifts. In fact, um, if only they were shipping it sooner, this would make the perfect Christmas gift. Although as you can see, they're shipping it in March 2033. Um, but yes, it's $49 for the Tiny TV 2 and the Tiny TV Mini, um, and uh, you can get uh, them with clear plastic as well. Um, and I don't think anyone is trying to say that this is going to replace the television in your uh, living room or in your bedroom or anything like that. Um, but I do think it is a lovely idea just to have, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with useless devices if those useless devices make you very, very happy. Um, and I feel like this would be something that would be perfect to stick on your desk at work or even at home just to keep you cheerful. Um, it's something that, uh, as you can see here, you can stream directly from USB to it as well. Um, so I'm not saying that it would be specifically useful, but you could find a use for it, put it that way. But yeah, at the end of the day, not every single maker thing has to be really useful and perfectly thought out and really this, that and the other. This is a, a, an amazing amount of engineering that's gone into something sort of ephemeral and lovely, and I really, really want one. <laughs> Moving over to Crowd Supply with a pre-launch page for the B Motion S3. Now the S3 in the name refers to the chip. This is an ESP32 S3 chip based development board. Um, and there is, as it says here, a PIR motion sensing board. Uh, unusually with the PIR motion sensor built directly into the silicon, uh, into the silicon, into the PCB itself. Um, and uh, there's a lot to like here. There's a battery management system on board so you can plug a LiPo into it. Um, and uh, yeah, as mentioned, everything's already on the board. So you could just stick this with a battery on the wall somewhere and then whenever someone moves past it you get uh, all of the thinking and connectivity power of the ESP32 S3 and uh, remember the S3 uh, uh, you can do a lot with it it can do long range wi-fi stuff it can also do uh, bluetooth low energy it can do a lot of different things so here's a slightly closer look at the board. And what you're seeing here is the sensor here with um, a little uh, trim pot here for uh, uh, changing the sensitivity of the PIR, I think. There's also an ambient light sensor on here as well. Not that I can see it right now, but that doesn't mean anything because uh, actually that could be it, couldn't it? They're so tiny, uh, these things at this stage. Um, and then uh, this is the battery connector on one side. And on the opposite side is a mini stemmer connector, um, which also will be quick compatible because stemmer and quick are interchangeable. That's SparkFun and Adafruit's different solderless uh, add-on things. Um, and then of course you get all the nice G uh, GPIOs as well. Um, uh, and again, this is essentially an ESP32 development board with a few extra add-ons involved. Perfect for uh, DIY smart home stuff. Um, uh, I, not much more to say at this stage because this is a pre-launch page. Uh, if you would like to know more about it, as with all crowd supply projects, you can put your name here in the box and you will receive emails when this thing goes live um, and you'll find out things like how much, how much it's gonna cost and when it'll be uh, turning up and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, these specialist kind of boards are uh, getting more and more common, and I think that's a good thing. Um, because yes, you could just get yourself an ESP32 S3 dev, dev board and add whatever you could want to it. You could just buy the module itself and spin up your own PCB. Um, there's a million and one ways you could do this, but at the end of the day, if you want to prototype your own thing, which is specifically designed for motion sensing and then doing something with that motion sensing, it makes sense to use something like this, which is already in place, where you know that the hardware is rigged up right you know that you you know there's no errors in that part of it so you can concentrate purely on your software and how it works uh, in that regard before maybe then spinning up your own custom pcb or whatever uh, yeah never underestimate the power of a very well put together development board and hopefully this one will be it we'll have to wait and see we will as always be returning to this when it goes live
Finally, on this week's show, we're going to be heading to the Raspberry Pi blog in order to take a look at a recent tutorial of theirs. Now, some time ago, I put out a tutorial for getting started with the Raspberry Pi Pico C and C++ SDK. We've also previously put out tutorials for how to work with MicroPython um, and to set up web, web servers using the Pico W. Um, but while we were at Maker Fair Rome, I met Toby for the first time, and Toby is Raspberry Pi's new maker in residence. And his job is kind of amazing. He just has to make cool things with Raspberry Pi stuff and then teach other people how to do it. And uh, this is an example of that. This is the Iron Man arc reactor, um, which is the thing that you see in all the Iron Man movies uh, that changes various times. But essentially, it's a, a lit ring that sits uh, that can sit on a chest or just sit by itself. But this one is quite nice because it sort of shows off the Raspberry Pi Pico as the centerpiece of it, uh, which is what it is running using. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico running MicroPython, also using the PIOs for timing, um, which is quite interesting. Um, I'm going to link this blog post in the description of the video, um, but there is a comprehensive step-by-step -step tutorial which we'll take a little look at now by following this link. Now, uh, like most Raspberry Pi tutorials, this one is very easy to follow, not only in terms of the hardware, but also the software as well. While it doesn't go into the, the depths of PIO here and all of that timing scary stuff, it, it gives you a rough idea of what the MicroPython is doing, and even if you are someone who has never programmed before, you should find that you're actually kind of understanding what's happening in the code, at least to an extent. The hardware side of it is really well thought out as well, and maybe we should start with that. Um, because if we jump down to the uh, to the hardware, uh, you'll see that this is, a, you know, perhaps uh, unsurprisingly, a set of NeoPixels or WS812B or WS81211, I think, are also the uh, uh, addressable ones, I forget. Um, and they are attached to a, a battery system on the back of a Raspberry Pi. So we have a little BMS here attached to a little LiPo battery and a switch. And it's wired to the back of the Pico because that's how you get this nice effect of the Pico being at the front and all lit. Um, and like so many um, uh, th th of those tables that you used to see in old bars that go down forever, this has that effect where there's a mirror on the back and then there is a one-way mirror on the front of the two pieces of glass acrylic so that it looks like it's going down forever. Um, and uh, yeah, it, you can see uh, the assembly here of uh, all of the different parts, all designed to be very easy to print um, and all designed to fit together in a way that if you can't cut the acrylic yourself, like we're, uh, or if you have to cut the acrylic yourself by hand more uh, accurately, if you can't cut it with a laser cutter, all of the edges will be hidden by the rest of the case. Again, a really nice touch. And here is what the finished product looks like. Um, so you can see there is the ring of WS812B or NeoPixels around the side. Um, and there is only one ring. It's just because of the uh, the dual mirror, the, the one-way mirror, and then the normal mirror uh, shooting back up towards it that gives it this effect. And it's lovely because, as I said, it's it kind of showing off the Pi Pico that's running the entire show. So just briefly before we stop, let's have a quick look at the code. So the code itself is a bunch of different MicroPython functions that can do different things with the LEDs, whether it gives them all block colors or chase the colors around a wheel or dim uh, or various kinds of dimming. In fact, the dimming is taken care of using the PIO. Uh, essentially, they create a state machine here, which takes care of all of the dimming to make sure that it is smooth. Presumably, I'm still still getting my head around uh, um, uh, PIO and how it all works. Um, but um, for example, here, once it starts, uh, there's a various different ways you can uh, things you can do, um, like just set the color and uh, like fill them all out in a color, like chase the colors around. Um, and then right at the bottom here, um, there is a simple uh, loop which just says, okay, uh, print fill. So for each color in the color array, and the color array is just the uh, pixel RGB values of all of the different colors, um, fill it, you know, say, okay, this is the color we're going to have, and then send that to the pixel, uh, the neo pixels. Okay, what color do we have next? We have red next. Okay, now send that to pixel show which is what actually sets the uh, uh, pixels and I believe that that is uh, always going through the state machine so it's always smooth but don't quote me on that Toby if you see this feel free to talk about how much of a noob I am in the comments below for not understanding uh, if the uh, yeah not understanding the code properly if I don't but the thing I love about it is that you can go through all this code and you can make sense of it but uh, you can just copy and paste it into Thony which is what it says to do um, and essentially it just tells you put it in there and you can save it onto the device you don't need to know how to code to do this in fact this would be a really nice project to do if you're someone who's maybe getting into 3D printing for the first time and you wanted to get a, you know, a, a Raspberry Pi Pico since they're so incredibly cheap and uh, they were giving them away uh, in, in droves at Embedded World when I was there. Um, yeah, uh, you can save this and then it will just work. Um, but as it also says, the other thing that's quite nice is that mo a lot of it is readable English. So you can see just from the top of the code how many LEDs there are, for example, um, what pin they're going to be working with and the initial brightness value. 
Another thing that's nice about this project is that pretty much every part of it is easy to get at this point. Uh, if you're trying to find a normal Raspberry Pi right now, good luck, I understand, that's very difficult. There's a lot of things that are still difficult to get your hands on. However, you could get all of the parts for this pretty quickly, and if you did, it might make the perfect kit to give to someone as a gift. In fact, if you gave this to a, a, a child or a beginner in this kind of thing as a gift, Christmas present, it might be the perfect thing to work on together through the Christmas period. It's certainly the kind of thing that I will be thinking a lot more about as my kids get older, because projects like this are just fantastic, easy to follow, and yeah, you get something that you really cherish at the end because you made it. Also, it's an arc reactor. It's an arc reactor. I've kept my excitement so small for the entirety of this bit. Can I just be excited for a second? It's an arc, re arc reactor. It's around me. I, I'm, in, I'm inside the arc reactor. <laughs> That has been our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all of the support that you show Electromaker, and thank you for the patience when there's been little times when I haven't managed to get a show out. It's been a very crazy and busy time, but we've had a lot of nice things to show for it. Um, one of the things that you may have noticed on our other channels uh, and uh, on our blog this week is that we've been talking about hardware pioneers, and uh, and Rich and Robin from Electromaker were there in London. Um, we'll be talking more about that event on next week's show. It seemed like it was pretty cool. I was here in Berlin, unfortunately, and couldn't attend. Um, but yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's show. If there are ever any projects or new products or any things that I have missed or haven't talked about on a show, please do let me know. I'm always interested in hearing the kind of things that you'd like to hear me talk about on the show. But for now, thank you so much for your support. I hope you have a fun, safe and creative week and I'll chat to you next time. <laughs>